A key position point that many riders strive for, and rightfully so, is a quiet lower leg. So when you have a quiet lower leg, first it reflects well on the rest of your position, and I'll explain why in a moment, but it also makes your lower leg a lot more effective when you're giving leg aids to your horse. I'm Callie, I'm here with Gemini today, and in this video I'm going to explain what actually creates this still lower leg. Is it making sure that your leg stays nice and tight on the horse? Is it keeping a lowered heel? Or is it something else? What we're going to do in this video is discuss the principles of a good stable lower leg position. We're going to talk about some of the common mistakes that riders make that create a lot of swing or excess movement in the lower leg. And then I'm going to link to a few videos that are going to give you more of the specific exercises that you can go out and try in order to improve your own position. So first off, to start with, we want to think about um, having a lower leg position that is stable, but not necessarily completely still. So if we make our leg too rigid in order to take out all of the movement, then we actually lose a lot of the good function of our joints for riding, which is having a little bit of shock absorption, and we're also on a moving horse. So a little bit of movement is good, but we want the leg to be stable. We don't want it to have excess swing or too much excess movement up and down. When we think about reducing the amount of movement in our leg, we want to think about just that. What are the things that we do that create too much movement, and then how we, can we take that away? So there's two of the most common mistakes that create a lot of excess movement in the lower leg. And I'm going to go ahead and walk out here with Gemini, and I'll show you what those two are. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up the trot because the movement will be a lot more obvious at the trot. So right now I have a stable lower leg. If you watch it closely, you'll see that there is a little bit of movement in my ankle and of course in my knee. But now if I try to actually grip and my leg, make my leg more still, the more that I try to hold on to him with my lower leg, first of all, riding becomes a lot more work and rising the trot becomes a lot more work, but also notice how my legs just got extra movement. As I gripped, it made my feet lighter in the stirrups. It pulled my heels up relative to my toes, and now I've got a lot of extra movement. Now what, if you feel like your foot does a lot of wiggling up and down, a lot of times that comes from too much gripping. Gripping through your knees, through your thighs, or even potentially through your calves. Now if I do another pattern and I push my heels down with every, stay, every um, rise phase of the trot, you'll notice that this creates that swinging movement. So every time I come up, if I brace down with my heels and push down with my heels, now my knee comes back slightly and my leg is going to swing forward. And you'll notice too, I had to work a lot harder to keep Gemini going. So now if I let that go and I come back here to the good function of my whole leg, so riding always when we want to improve or correct one part of our posture, we always have to think about our whole body because sometimes that pattern that's happening down in the leg can actually be starting somewhere else. So when I came back to the position where my lower leg was stable, my back was full. When I was in the rising phase, I was allowed my knee to go forward and down. And then that allowed the weight to come through and come as I was rising, the weight came onto my thigh and slightly onto my stirrup instead of all of the weight dropping in my heel and creating this kind of a movement. So those are the two most common, either the lower leg swinging from too much weight coming into the heel or the lower leg coming up and down and bouncing too much this way from too much gripping at one of several points in the leg. So as I said, I've got a few videos for you that'll give you the exercises to help with um, those two problems and some things that you can go out to start practicing. So go ahead and put in the comments after you try those exercises, let me know how it goes and let me know what you learned from this video.
Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you back for our next show here at CRK Training.